This is Burn This Book, a banned books book club where we, Nicole and Eden, read a banned or challenged book twice a month and discuss its meaning, impact, and censorship to make it more accessible for all readers. This week's book is Anastasia Krupnik by Lois Lowry, the first of the series published in 1979. Um, we don't have any guests today, so it's just us, you know, talking, talking childhood. Just us partying. It's just us mm-hmm. being cute. And um, why don't we start off by saying Lois Lowry is very cool. Lois Lowry, the same Lois Lowry of the... As the giver. Saying, the gifter. <laughs> <laughs> he, his love language was giving gifts and... <laughs> <laughs> the gifter. Yeah, the giver. Um, so she's, yeah, she's incredible. So let's do a little mm-hmm. summary. How about it? Let's do a summary. Yeah. Um, uh, this... Yeah, what? Oh. Go for it. No, you. No, you. Me? Yeah. Okay. This is a, a book called Anastasia Krupnik about Anastasia Krupnik, who is a young girl who kind of chronicles her thoughts throughout her uh, growing up. It's a coming of age story, as most stories are. <laughs> uh, most good ones. Most good ones. Yeah. Uh, and the big conflict for her is that her parents are expecting another child and she's i think like 10 years old or 12 she's in fourth grade so she's um fourth grade she's 10 yeah okay so she's 10 years old and she's upset that her parents are going to have another baby and she wants to name this baby and she has an inappropriate name for this baby that we don't know about until like later on in the book and it's just like interspersed with her journal Mm -hmm. pages from her journal throughout the book um, so her journal is things I like, things I don't like. And so throughout the book, she crosses things off or she adds things and cross those off or re-adds things. And it's really cute and charming. It was, that was my takeaway was like just reading the book. It, it is one of the most charming things. I was like, am I am I into ch- like children's literature? Is this my I new think thing? So. Because it was just like a breath of... It's like how I feel about Abbott Elementary, where it's like low stakes drama, even though public education mm-hmm. is high stakes. But um, mm-hmm. but it's like the same kind of media where it was just like, okay, I can I can get with these issues. Like I can deal with this. I have space for this kind of stuff. Whereas mm-hmm. like Anastasia's drama is so good and so cute. And her constantly reevaluating her to-do list. It's just like, it was such a refreshing read. I... I yeah. really recommend every adult in the world to read this. And it's just like, yeah, it was charming. Charming is all yeah. I get out. Yeah. I, yeah. I wrote in my notes, I wrote no notes, just so charming. <laughs> Charmed to the T. Seriously, there's like, so in the beginning of the book, you kind of get to know her personality because she's writing this journal. And part of her thing is how much she doesn't like her teacher. And she has like this whole like, three sentence experience talking about how many wrinkles her teacher has yeah. and how she's like she's so old but also that's not a lie so she is old and like she's like trying to figure mm-hmm. out like if she's being honest in her journaling <laughs> and she's really like, yeah. evaluating every single word and she's like I am dumb no I'm not actually dumb but I feel this way and I'm trying to figure out what I actually am trying to say about mm-hmm. this but when I say I don't like how old my teacher is I can that's honest I don't like it and it's just like yeah it's so <laughs> cute and it's so cute and like her crushes throughout the ugh. book too uh where she had a crush on this one boy because he seemed kind of edgy because <laughs> uh, he came in to school with a, a t-shirt on with a bad word on the front mm-hmm. And so she was like, oh, like, <laughs> he's interesting. But like when she tried to pursue or she announces at the dinner table that she likes him and she thought it was going to be a really controversial thing because he's a troublemaker. Um, and I also think she tried to bring race into it, too. It's like, you probably don't like him because he's black, huh? <laughs> and her parents like, we, what? <laughs> Her, is that right did i yeah. get that wrong no you're right her yeah. parents reactions to stuff are so funny her dad's like a professional poet and professor mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and her mom is also a professor i'm trying to remember too i don't quite remember what she did foul on us but yeah. their responses are just so cute to anastasia like you can tell that they just like adore her and mm-hmm. Lois Lowry, in the foreword of the book I read, 
and she talked about how she was finishing two really heavy books um and after she wrote and published two really intense books she just needed to like to breathe and that's how Mm -hmm. Anastasia came into the picture was she started writing about this girl who didn't have the same issues as like number the stars you know Mm -hmm. wasn't dealing with being Jewish during the Holocaust or like you know like she wasn't in a dystopian world it was just this cool thing and she was able to make this into like a character that got to relate to so many quirky little girls and mm-hmm. she pointed out one important thing she was like I really wanted my the hero of the story not to be a hero because she was so pretty or blonde and perfect I wanted her to be celebrated for her owl glasses her kooky clothing and all this other stuff it was so like Lois oh mm-hmm. my gosh yeah, I'm reading the companion books to The Giver right now, and man, she is such a great writer. <laughs> oh my gosh, I should read those. I know Sign a lot of up. people aren't a fan of them because they're they're not like your traditional sequels where like you follow Jonas mm-hmm. through everything. Um, so if you approach it from like that angle of like, okay, like this is just set mm-hmm. within the same world. It's just like still beautiful lessons to be learned. Gosh. And with with um I felt like a very similar things that I felt with um what's it called? Are you there, God? Mm-hmm. It's me, Margaret. Yeah. But Anastasia was much more charming to me though. <laughs> well, there's Same. like I don't know. Like Margaret uh, yeah, in both cases well, it's different. They're two different girls with two different personalities. But like I could definitely see my daughter growing to be growing up to be an Anastasia sort, and I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> and if she doesn't, you will make her grow up to be that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, <laughs> Mabel, read these books and be like her, just like her. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I wonder too if like it's because Judy Bloom and Lois Lowry, I because they're not that far off in the eras that they were writing, but it did feel like they were writing for different generations. And I don't know if that's mm-hmm. actually accurate, but that's how it feels when I'm reading them. When I'm reading mm-hmm. Judy Bloom, it does feel like I'm reading for my mom's generation. Like, you know, mm. when my mom was a little girl kind of energy. It's like those same yeah. things where it's like awkward to talk about periods. Like it's still a little like taboo to, to get into that stuff. Whereas reading, mm-hmm. um, reading Lois Lowry doesn't feel that way. It feels like, it feels, I don't know. It just feels very attuned to my 90s childhood. Um mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's true or if that's crazy and someone who's a lot older than me will be like, yo, that's not accurate at all. We don't agree. Then I, I would love to hear that. But that's how it feels to me where I just related to the issues in Lois Lowry's, uh, in Anastasia. Like Anastasia's personality just felt a lot more like someone who's probably watched The Weekenders or yeah, a lot more recess <laughs> and like Hey Arnold than Margaret. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> It feels like it feels like the movie Turning Red to me, mm-hmm. where it was very much a snapshot of a generation growing up, and like probably older generations are upset by it because they're upset by the fact that in Turning Red, she draws like little fan fiction <laughs> of her and like her crush. Yeah, and yeah, I remember making lists like Anastasia too. Yeah. I'm just like, these are people that I have a crush on right now. And these are people that I hate. It like, you must know. be documented. And I think my yeah. mom also did that, like looking through her journals and stuff. She's quite the journaler. But it just feels like the issues uh-huh. or the things that were being brought up were just like different. Yeah, were I feel like my mom's like with Judy Bloom, with uh, Margaret. I keep wanting to say Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> The Iron Lady. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd, I would read that. It's like, I've caused the demise of so many social services. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's my impression of Margaret Thatcher. I've caused the demise. Um, but my mom, I feel like in her writings, like she was all about that. But I just feel like, like the issues, the things that were seen as like, Ooh, I'm a little girl and I shouldn't talk about this in each of these situations. Mm-hmm. I just felt like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't identify yeah. with Margaret's as much as I identified with uh, Cutie Pie Anastasia. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was even like Opie. Anastasia even kind of reminded me of Opie from 
um, Andy Griffith show, which I know is also off the rails because that's a 60s TV show. Uh-huh. But like, it was like the same issues where it was like, these are non-issues, but they feel like big issues because you're yeah. a little kid and you don't understand. And yeah, as a little kid, they feel like big issues. Yeah, it was so cute. Whereas the Margaret bitch issues were kind of big issues. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, oh. there are higher stakes for for Margaret. Yeah, and she, yeah, just trying to figure out. I feel like Margaret was trying to find her voice, and Anastasia has a voice. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, Bravo. no dig at M- Margaret. You know, yeah, it's just like no dig at yeah, Madge. different stages. Different stages. Yeah. we could also argue Margaret Thatcher was also <laughs> trying to find her voice, <laughs> and the one she chose was horrible. Um, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I think that's probably true, and I think that speaks to the fact that like the parents. I, don't, I didn't know this was going to be a, a contrast, compare and contrast, Margaret. Yeah, and me neither. Anastasia, <laughs> but in Are You There, God, the parents aren't as forthcoming about stuff with Margaret. Like, I think they're really mm-hmm. open home and like they talk about hard things, but they still like don't get into the like. Margaret has to do a lot of stuff secretly, like with the whole like, yeah. religion stuff, like big things. Whereas I feel like. Anastasia's parents are, like, really safe places for things. Like, you even see that in the beginning of the book when she brings her failed poem to her parents. Mm-hmm. And they, like, talk about it. Which was it. beautiful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Incredible. Um, but they, like, talk about it in a way that's, like, okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah. There was – I wrote down one part that was um, – that I loved about her parents just – yeah, they were they were very frank about things. Um, Anastasia at one point asked both of her parents individually if they've ever been in love or if they've ever had an affair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like they answered it so sweetly, and like her mom said, "Yes, I've had an affair. Uh, I'm in an affair with your dad. Like, <laughs> I'm just like so in love with him and and stuff like that." Um, and so she. She talked about, like, whether she's been in love with anyone else. And she talked about, like, someone that she had dated before she met her dad. um, And how they, like, one of her favorite dates. She described one of her favorite dates. Yeah. And then Anastasia was like, oh, what did you do on your date? And so, oh, we drove here. And then we sat in the car and talked. He's like, you just talked in the car? And then her mom said, yeah. And then we hugged and kissed a lot. And then we went home. Which I thought was so sweet. (laughs) I don't know. There was something sweet about it. I I'm agree just like, with you. I agree with you. It, there wasn't like describing. A, yeah. yeah, it wasn't weird. Yeah, she didn't have to. Like, it wasn't make weird. It into like a bigger thing than it was. Yeah, it's like we just hugged and kissed a lot. Yeah, and we went on a date, mm-hmm. and now I'm married to your dad, and I love it. Even when they were explaining yeah. poetry, they're like, it's "Just some people just don't understand it, and that's okay." Mm-hmm. And yeah. that was like, it wasn't like a, a thing of like, "Well, poetry is this and this and this and this." But, mm-hmm. yeah, and the whole, like, yeah, we kissed and we hugged a lot. That's all. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't have to get into, like, is, is the child going to think this is inappropriate? Blah, 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 blah. It's just mm-hmm. very simple, very straightforward. Very simple. Um, another part of Anastasia, the book, um, that I loved, well, I guess Anastasia, the person, too, is they visit, uh, is it her dad's mom? Yes. Or her mom's mom? Her dad's I mom. I thought it was her dad's mom. She, um, yeah, I don't remember. Sorry. Yeah. Um, she vis- they visit her dad's mom frequently in the nursing home, and she um, has dementia and is having a hard time remembering things. Um, but she always talks about her husband, Sam, and just, like, in really sweet ways. And Anastasia is not sure of how to, like, respond in some situations. Like, oh, like, where did Sam go? And mm-hmm. She, like, looked to her parents for some assurance, and she looks back. He's like, well, like, Sam went out for a second, you know? And just such a hard thing for a kid to take in, but it's not something to be sheltered from, I guess. Yeah. Because, like, by the end, she develops a relationship and, like, learns more about her grandpa through her grandma. And um, originally she wanted to name her brother One Ball Riley. <laughs> so cute she's such a funny kid oh my god he's such a funny kid but then she um because of this relationship and just like showing this attachment that she had to her grandma she decides to name her brother sam which was really sweet 
truly is so yeah th- that was another thing too about this book is like the whole time I was reading it I was like I want to read this with my nieces like mm-hmm. I really want to get this series for my nieces and I was like is one of my nieces too old for it I don't know and I was like really processing just because it's like a book that I'd like to share with people and I think that's the hallmark of like a really great book is like I want it to become a community thing like I want us all to read it and have yeah. Anastasia in our lives like she is so cute like I was so not cute. looking totally forward to this book I was like, this Mm -hmm. will be fine. But oh my gosh. I think it's one of my favorite Mm -hmm. books I've read so far in this I think so too. It's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. No notes. No notes. Just super charmed. No notes. Just be prepared to be super charmed. Yeah. (laughs) Be prepared to pause your day and just smile on your face. Big smile. Mm -hmm. Big stress reliever. Ugh, it's so good. And it's written in such a way that it's like, yeah, you're brilliant, Lois. I don't even know how you do it. Like, you painted this whole thing and you did so well. Like, I go back to the beginning as well. I feel like when she's going through the bookshelf of her dad's book, of his, her dad's published poetry books, how each mm-hmm. one has like a, to this person, to this person, to this person. Her favorite is the mm-hmm. one that's dedicated to her. Her mom's favorite is the one that's dedicated to her, to her mom. And her mom hates the one that's dedicated to another woman. <laughs> And, uh-huh. <laughs> and like, it's just, like, those details. Like, she doesn't, Lois doesn't get, get into it. She does this with the giver, where she just gives us these little, like, snapshots of uh-huh. life in their home to show how well, like, that these people are fully created. Complete. Be- yeah, mm-hmm. there's, they have histories, they have all this stuff. And everything is so multidimensional without her having to give too much uh-huh. away. It's so smart. I don't know how she does it. I don't know either. It's just it's a magnificent skill to write middle grade, I think, oh and like in a in a tone and vocabulary and everything that that age will understand. Yes. Um and then have it resonate with adults too. Like Yeah. Cuz I've read some middle grade uh some for this podcast and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of was a waste of time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But these one, this one was just like a, yeah, just so charming. Yeah. Like it was a joy to read. It was mm-hmm. not a waste of time at all. Yeah. Thank Mm-mm. you, Lois. I don't have anything else really to say about it other than like, you just get to pop into this little girl's brain and it's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any guesses why it's banned? And and granted, this is like a multi-book series, so there's probably stuff in other yeah. books. Yeah. Um, which, who knows? Maybe I'll spend the rest of my life reading the rest of the series. <laughs> should we turn into an Anastasia Krupnik podcast? Yeah. <laughs> just we read Anastasia? Up like her for Halloween. <laughs> oh, wait. I have something to say real quick before we go into why it was banned. So mm-hmm. when Lois Lard would visit, um, visit schools... She would have mm-hmm. an Anastasia Krupnik look-like contest with the students that she was reading to. So the student mm-hmm. that looked the most like Anastasia Krupnik would get a signed copy of the book. And That's they would, cute. like, have them stand up and everyone would vote on who looked most like it. And she made it, she was like, it was so important to do that because I really wanted these girls who weren't, like, the perfect doll-like faces and all this other stuff to be celebrated. And to mm-hmm. have those heroes look like them. And she was like, it got weird, though, when one of the boys in one of the classes looked the most like Anastasia Krupnik. <laughs> and she's like, that's when I realized I needed to have stronger parameters of this competition. Because yeah. <laughs> she's like, I wanted it to be about girls, not about just, like, random boys. And I uh-huh. thought that was just, like, also, it speaks to Lois Lowry's, like, thought. Like, she really is doing this for kids. Like, she and Judy Bloom, I mm-hmm. thought, and Madeline Lingle, like, I just feel like all of those women really knew who their audience was and they made mm. they made it so interactive with children like I would have killed to have an author come and do that right? in yeah. my elementary school like make the book come alive like that all the authors that came really just told us like write with a pen don't write with a pencil it's waste time erasing like it was always weird and I was like thank you Kenneth Tomasma thank you <laughs> but um, <laughs> Do you remember him? He was like, I don't. Oh, he wrote like a lot of books about um, that, like myth, like all I don't know. They just like mythologize. Is that a word? I don't. Mm-hmm. Know. And um, use a lot of stereotypes too about Native American culture, 
And oh. he has, like, so many books. But he came to my elementary school and spoke. And he was like, this is what you got to do. Anyways, I was charmed by that story by Lois Lowry. Because I was like, oh, my gosh, of course. Like, would I have been a girl that looked like a, a Anastasia Krupnik? Would I? I don't think so. But I mm-hmm. wish I would have. Like, yeah, it makes, yeah, it's a really cool way of celebrating the kids that don't, that don't always fit in. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why do you think it was banned? My thinking is because don't they like talk about I'm trying to think of like like it's just I didn't really feel like anything was that serious. But they talk about like like affairs and they talk about adult stuff and she talks about how much she doesn't like her teacher. Don't they talk about beer at one point? She does take sips of alcohol uh-huh. and she hated it. Um uh, I'm try- These were all written out of context, so I don't remember. I wrote down jiggly bosom. Oh. I think she mentioned that someone had a jiggly bosom. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she did. It's in the beginning. Was it her saying. teacher? It's her teacher. Yeah. Her teacher's Is that one of the reasons why she doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> she didn't like that. <laughs> she doesn't... There's so many reasons why she doesn't like that teacher, and it's so funny, and that's one of them. Uh, another one was One Ball Riley, mm-hmm. <laughs> what she wanted to name her brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she was trying on some clothes and her mom said that it would fit in a couple of years because her chest would be bigger or something like that. So just alluding to puberty would like... I think so. Yeah. So those are my guesses. I love how... It's just like a lot of... <laughs> early on... <laughs> how I just our, write down. Yeah, how early on in our guesses, like in the series... We were like, oh, it's got to be because of the devil and stuff. And now you're just like alluding to puberty because it's like we, yeah. <laughs> we're now learning our audience is so sensitive. Not our audience, but the people who are banning all these things. Very sensitive. People. Yeah. I mean, we saw that with like turning red as well. Yeah, we Just did. even alluding to periods. People were up in arms. Enraged. About that. Enraged. Enraged. All right. Yeah. Let's see why it was banned. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, Anastasia Krupnik series was 29th on the American Library Association's 100 Most Frequently Challenged Books of 1990 to 2000. That's so crazy. For reasons such as references to beer, Playboy magazine, and a casual reference to a character wanting to kill herself. The series was also criticized because one novel of the series featured Anastasia replying to a personal ad and lying about her age and her life to an older man. Oh my gosh. However, the two never have any romantic experiences, and when they meet, the man has no idea Anastasia is the woman to whom he had been writing. So she's just catfishing someone. Yeah. That's so cute, though, honestly. Also messed up, but... Yeah. Yeah. But it kind of reminds me of Pen15. Mm-hmm. Of just, like, um, documenting adolescent life that we don't talk about as much um like i never did i guess that's a chat room oh no a personal ad but from the sounds of it like that really resonated like pen 15 really resonated with people um so yeah because of chat rooms not chat rooms well, yeah, I guess chat rooms. Like, she didn't Maya and Pen15 pretend to... I haven't watched all of Pen15. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched no. all of Pen15? Never mind. Well, then. She's mm-hmm. chatting to an older man who, it turns out, is just her neighbor friend. <laughs> yeah. Who is, like, her same age because she's catfishing her. Yeah. Thinking that she would only be interested in him if he were an older man. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I also am confused by personal ads because I feel like they're a part of media. Like, I feel like people are always talking personal ads. Like, even in, like, TV shows in the 70s and 90s. I mean, 70s, 80s, and 90s, they're always like, did you answer that? You know, like, they're just talking personal ads. I never am encountering a personal ad these days. Yeah. Or am I ever what thinking to respond to one? <laughs> I believe. They are they just, just, like, in the newspaper? Yeah, I like in the, newspaper, in the newspaper. Like, Man seeking woman, yeah, kind of. So. That's like pre Tinder, yeah, I pre think so. online dating, yeah. But I don't think that they were always just romantically. Um, I don't think it was just about rom- romance or physicality. Yeah, it could be. I like, think it was about anything. 
Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know though, Eden. You tell I guess me. it's like face- Facebook Marketplace now, huh? Or like Craigslist. I think so, probably. It's like looking for a a couch. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the right person to ask. I'm just as old yeah. as you are. <laughs> I told you I've never encountered these. But what I've taken from shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is funny that our gener- Yeah, I don't know. I just yeah, never needed them. Um, I don't have anything else to say about this other than it was so awesome and I love this book. And if you guys, if any of our listeners are interested in subscribing, we'd love it. And if you want to mm-hmm. give us a little rating, we'd love it as long mm-hmm. as it's high. <laughs> mm-hmm. Someone gave us a two star, but no review next to it. <laughs> it's like, just give us your feedback. You can, we'll take the feedback. Yeah. We can change. We'll change. We'll do anything. We'll do anything, do anything. to please you. <laughs> Personal ad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Looking for the person who gave us two stars. Ugh. Yeah. Send us a feedback. Talk to us. Talk to us. We get it. We're newbies at this whole game. We're here to have a good time. Maybe not a long time, but a good time. Burn This Book is produced by us, Nicola Corin and Eden Wen. Music written by me, Nicola Corin, and produced and performed by my dad, Frank.